Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our October Watch Guard webinar. We appreciate all of you taking time out of your calendar to join us. We've got some fun stuff to talk about this month. Uh, this is Madison Slater. I am the VP of Security and Compliance here at JSCM Group and uh, resident Watch Guard expert. So let's go ahead and jump right in. Just a little bit of housekeeping before we get started. Uh, everyone's lines are all on mute just so we don't get any background noise. This webinar is being recorded so we can play it back on our website if you need that for a later time. There is a chat and a Q and A function available. So if you have any questions, please feel free to send those over and I will be happy to answer those here at the end. All right, so this month's topics uh, for any of you that have attended our, recently, we haven't had a lot to update on, but we've got some new stuff here in October. So first, we're going to focus on new mid range hardware. We've got some new appliances out there available for you all. So we'll talk about some of the statistics on those. Uh, we've got some updates, to the watch guard cloud management. We'll also do a little bit of a discussion of Wi Fi in the WatchGuard cloud. And then, since we've got so many cloud management updates, uh, we'll do a quick demo on navigating the WatchGuard cloud just in case that's not something that you've had a um, time to dive into. We'll make sure that you're aware of any of those new features. And then, of course, we'll talk about our upcoming training if you want to get any official classes done. Before we get into our hardware, though, let's take a quick look at firmware. Um, so uh, WatchGuard breaks down their firmware releases by model. We have three different tiers of firmware, and uh, we do have some new releases as of October for some of these. Our XTM devices, we're still sitting at 12.13 update 6. That was released back in August. If you have not yet updated to that, that is our recommended release for those devices. Go ahead and get updated. but we would also strongly urge you consider replacing any of those XTM devices. They are all reaching end of life, meaning they will not get any updates, but really they're stuck right now on this 1213. They're just getting patches. They're not getting any new features. So really take some time if you haven't already to think about getting those devices updated. For some of our T series and M series devices like our T10, T15, M200 and M300, we have 1259 out that was released on the 7th of this month. Now, we at this point are still recommending 1257 update 3. That does date back to May. Um, our general practice is that we like to wait until there is a bug fix update. That being said, way, uh, May has been a while. Um, and we've we've had a couple of revisions that WatchGuard has released since then. So I've put some asterisks here. We are going to be testing these out with 12.59 on these devices just to see if we've got any issues that are popping up. And as always, if we're not seeing anything, if we feel like it's a, a, a good enough release, we'll send out an alert to all of our clients letting you know that you should be good to update. Um, for our uh, other T-Series and M-Series boxes like the T20, T55, uh, some of our newer M series devices, we have 1272 that was released on the 7th of October. Again, we're still recommending 127 update one, but much like with our other boxes, we will be testing out this 1272 release. And if we feel like it's um, stable, we're not seeing any significant issues, then we'll send an alert out that uh, we think it's a good idea to upgrade. We really don't like going long without firmware upgrades. And um, again, being since May, uh, I'm I'm starting to get a little antsy with with feeling like I need to upgrade my device, but we always try to proceed with caution with new firmware. So we will try to test that out before we ever recommend that anyone push that to their box. All right. So the big news this month, we have new mid range hardware. Um, we've known that new hardware was coming for a little while, and it's finally here. We've got several new appliances that are out. Um, these are, uh, we, we have them on our price list now, so these are devices that you can place orders for. Um, so as we're going through these, if any of these look good to you, if you've been thinking about getting new hardware, perfect time to do that with these new boxes out. Make sure you get in touch with your account manager and they can get you some pricing on those. So the first one that we have is our M290. So these are the 90 series boxes. Uh, the M290 Perfect for small to mid size organizations. They're recommending nothing more than 75 users. Now, where the big focus is with these new devices is on processing 
from an encryption perspective. Um, if you have talked to us in any perspective from a security standpoint, if you've gone through our classes, if we've done a security assessment for you, the big thing that we talk about when we're talking about firewalls is deep packet inspection. In fact, uh, I think it was last month we did a demo on it. DPI is how the firewall takes HTTPS traffic and actually inspects the content. Without deep packet inspection, your firewall cannot properly secure your HTTPS traffic. Now, with that does come some extra processing. DPI is necessary, though. It used to be just nice to have. Now you absolutely need it. So Watch Garden really took that into consideration, and that's what these new boxes are focused on, is working with that encrypted traffic and giving a beefier box to process that throughput a little bit. So this 700 megabits per second, that's what we're, ta we're talking about with having that throughput with our HTTPS encryption and our IPS. Now, the 290 is an interesting box. Um, it's our smallest rack mounted firewall of this series. But one of the things that they're doing that you don't see with the M270 is we now have an expansion bay. So with this expansion bay, we've got options. We can do four one gig copper, four SPF, uh, two, or sorry, SFP, two SFP plus, and then four multi-speed. So again, we've got a new expansion bay available for this two, M290 device. Great for small to mid size device, um, small to mid size offices. So maybe you've got an M200. Um, those are going to be coming up end of life here in the next few years. Um, and maybe you're wanting to get ahead of that. DPI is something you want to get implemented. That's really what this device is designed for. Next, we have the Firebox M390. This is going to be great for organizations up to 250 users. So uh, a little bit beefier of a box. Um, when we compare the throughput of this, when we're talking encryption to the, uh, comparing it to the M370, we're seeing double. It's twice as much throughput as what you would see with the M370. Again, we've got our expansion bay option on this. So four one gig copper ports, four SFP, two SFP plus, or four multi-speed ports that you can get with that expansion bay to give yourself a little bit more functionality as far as connections go. Uh, no, there is not an M490, so we're gonna jump straight to the Firebox M590. So this is gonna support our growing mid-size businesses up to 500 users. Um, expansion bay functionality, so we're seeing up to 72% compared to the M570 when we're talking about that HTTPS and IPS throughput. What we get with the 590 are two 10 gig SFP plus. So uh, built into this device are the SFP plus module. So if, uh, if that's something that you're looking at needing, then this M590 device is going to have that option available to you. So a nice beefy box, um, this would be uh, maybe a trade up uh, if, you're look, if you're currently running the M570, um, Considering DPI, the 590 is going to be a good a good box size for you. And then finally, our Firebox M690. This is going to support our businesses up to 850 users. We still have that expansion bay. The option we have here are four multi-speed PoE Plus ports. That's an option to us. Uh, built into the box, we have two 10 gig SFP Plus and two 10 gig multi-speed, but again, you can get that four multi-speed PoE plus, and we're seeing almost twice the throughput of the 690 as compared to the 670. Um, the, the 70 boxes are still great, like don't get me wrong, those are still really beefy boxes, but when we're talking about encryption, when we're talking about the throughput of that, when we're talking about the need for deep packet inspection, again, that's really where WatchGuard was aiming with these new boxes. So, um, you know, lots of options here for you if you're looking at hardware trade up. Now, for the 590 and the 690, just to give you a little bit of idea uh, what the back of these boxes look like. Um, so they do have redundant AC power supplies. They're not hot swappable, but you do have redundant power supplies. Also on these boxes over on the left, we've got a PoE Plus dedicated power supply. In order for that PoE Plus to work, we need to give it a little bit more juice um, if that looks, if that port looks familiar, uh, yes, that is very similar to, or actually the same as what they're using for a lot of their other boxes as far as the regular power supply goes. 
So um, you do have uh, an added PoE plus power supply on these that's going to be needed to get that functionality to work. But overall, we're really excited about these new boxes. Again, we've been waiting on these for a little while. We, we knew they were coming. Uh, if any of those look interesting to you, if it's time for you to look at replacing your current box, reach out to your account manager here. If you're not sure who that is, reach out to me. I'll point you in the right direction and we'll get you some pricing on what that new hardware looks like. Again, it is available on our price sheets from WatchGuard, so uh, we should have no problem with getting those ordered for you all pretty quickly. Um, as far, uh, just as far as supply goes, um, uh, in the, the partner webinar that I attended, um, they did want to make it clear that their other appliances, they've got decent stock on. I know there's a chip shortage that's affecting pretty much everything. Um, WatchGuard firewalls, though, in general, pretty, pretty stable stock there. So, um, you know, we still recommend don't wait until the last minute if you are looking at replacing hardware, because obviously uh, we don't know what's coming down the road and. Um, we've seen a lot of delays with with different supply chains as far as IT equipment goes, but WatchGuard did want to make it oh, make you all aware that they do have a, a decent amount of stock, so shouldn't be too big of an issue with with getting new equipment in. All right, uh, updates to WatchGuard cloud management. Um, so WatchGuard has been putting a lot of emphasis on the WatchGuard cloud. Now, if you're not familiar with what this is, we are going to do, that's going to be our demo this afternoon, just taking a look at it. There's lots that resides in WatchGuard cloud. And over the years, they've been making improvements, adding things. Um, but the big thing that they've added recently is the management of your firewall in the WatchGuard cloud. Uh, so instead of using the local web interface, instead of using WSM, you can set up a firewall to be managed through the cloud. Um, there are some limitations to it, but it is what I wanted to share with you just so you can see what their general roadmap looks like as far as what new features they're going to be releasing. Now, obviously, these are planned dates. They are not necessarily 100% set in stone, but I did want you to be aware of what's coming. If cloud management is something that is interesting to you, uh, you know, wanting to have that management functionality up there instead of just doing it locally, then that is an option for you. So Q3 2021, um, we saw some additions here. Uh, back in July, for example, they implemented the ability to do Active Directory through your policies, um, system actions for fire clusters, single sign-on, dynamic DNS. Those all came in with Q3. Here in Q4, uh, November, they're going to be implementing the SSL VPN for mobile. Uh, VPN, we've got our authentication integration, IPv6 plan for December. Um, and then some of our just general management uh, firmware updates across multiple subscribers. That's going to be more if you're on the MSP side and managing multiple devices, but that functionality is going to be available. Um, seeing configuration differentiation should be available this month. And then looking ahead to the beginning of Q1 2022, somehow we are close to the end of the year already, uh, they are going to be implementing the ability to use fire clusters, high availability units, not currently something that you can really do through the WatchGuard cloud. They know that's a big need, um, so that's coming. SD-WAN and traffic management uh, configuration. And then Q2, we're looking at the ability to do aliases and templates, SD-WAN and templates, dynamic routing, et cetera. Um, WatchGuard Cloud, uh, you all hopefully know this. I try to be as honest as possible. WatchGuard Cloud, it has limitations right now. Now, they've got a lot of stuff on the roadmap, but there's plenty of stuff that it is missing that I personally am uh, sort of holding off on them having that functionality until I really consider moving my firewall to the cloud. That being said, if you are, if you don't consider yourself necessarily a power user on your firewall, if you like the idea of cloud management, if you just need a, an easy way to manage your policies, you're not trying to get into the nitty gritty of it, um, you're not a firewall nerd like I am, um, cloud is probably a perfect option for you. Uh, there are some limitations with it from a setup perspective. You, at this point, do have to factory reset your firewall completely to get it into the cloud. So that's a Pretty big gotcha, but you know, not necessarily super difficult to, to overcome. Um, you can rebuild that configuration in the cloud, but just something to be aware of. 
Um, I do expect that with more of these implementations with the cloud, them implementing more functionality, we are going to start seeing more and more people move there. I am definitely not opposed to cloud management in general. I just, uh, for me personally, I want to get a few more of these items checked off before I really start to consider moving my own box. But again, that functionality is available and, and definitely something that if, if you are looking for an easier way to manage your device, something that, that you should consider. All right, and then continuing on with our uh, WatchGuard Cloud, uh, Wi-Fi is now going to be available through the WatchGuard Cloud. It is currently in beta. Um, so if we look at what the WatchGuard Cloud entails, they're really putting a lot of emphasis on this. So WatchGuard Cloud is where we see things like the cloud management, like we just talked about. Uh, it's where we can manage our, our off point for our MFA. Um, there's also endpoint protection functionality. And now we have the Wi-Fi implementation. This is for our Wi-Fi 6 hardware that can be um, it can be managed through the WatchGuard Cloud. So um, they're really trying to give us an environment that we log into one place, we see a bunch of stuff. I personally really like that idea. Uh, the few the fewer places I have to jump around to. Um, several months back, for example, they moved TDR under the WatchGuard Cloud. So you're still getting all of these functions that WatchGuard has had available for years, but now they're trying to put them all in one easier to use location. And through that integration, you're getting a lot more visibility into this stuff when it's all tied in to that one area. So again, any Wi-Fi 6 WatchGuard hardware is going to be available to be managed through the Wi-Fi cloud, uh, so or through the WatchGuard cloud. So um, more and more coming to that platform. Which, speaking of, let's take a look at it. So if uh, the cloud is not necessarily something that you have messed around with a lot, I do want you to be aware of some of the functionality that's in here. Um, to get to the WatchGuard cloud portal, you can go to watchguard.com, log in, go under my WatchGuard and go to WatchGuard cloud, or you just navigate to cloud.watchguard.com, log in with the same credentials that you use to log into your regular WatchGuard account. Uh, as a side note, if you don't have MFA on your WatchGuard login, please turn that on. Um, plenty of uh, information out there. We've got a blog post about it. WatchGuard has help documents, but MFA whenever possible. All right, so uh, looking at the WatchGuard cloud, first we have our dashboard. Now, the biggest thing we use our WatchGuard cloud for is logging through cloud visibility and off point. Uh, we are big MFA off point proponents. Uh, we use it quite extensively around here. So when you first log into the WatchGuard cloud, you get a dashboard and you get a nice high level overview of a bunch of the stuff you've got going on on your device. So if you've got active alerts, um, I obviously have a bunch, but a lot of that has to do with the testing devices that we use. Uh, we have the option to do a dark web scan so, you scan so you can enter your email address or your domain, see if there's anything on the dark web out there about you. You get an idea of what your licensing looks like, um, your device connection status, so ever how many devices you have pointed into the cloud, what their connection status looks like. Um, I don't have any Wi-Fi managed uh, or any cloud managed APs, but that would show me that information there. Um, information about my authentication, so this is going to be coming from my off point, got my user count, um, Host status, this is going to be from TDR, also from my indicators from TDR. And then if you're using the endpoint security, you'll see that available as well. So the dashboard is really designed to be your high level overview. What have you got going on through the different tools that you're using? Under monitor, really depends on what service you're wanting to deal with. So um, again, our big services here are going to be cloud visibility, which is your logging, off point, which is MFA, Threat detection, which is our TDR service, and then endpoints, which is going to be tying in through TDR and Panda. So, for example, let's say I want to look at logs on my device. Under monitor, I can go into my devices. It would show me my device options over here on the left, and then I can dive down into my logs. If you are not currently logging your firewall to cloud visibility, I highly recommend you set that up. It gives you a lot of functionality. Now, what if you say, yeah, but Madison, I'm already using Dimension. Cool, keep using Dimension. You can actually use both. Um, Dimension is great for extended, extended log retention, depending on how much space you have saved for that 
VM or Hyper-V environment. Cloud visibility, honestly, it's just a lot faster. Um, and there are some nice visuals in here. So set it up with both. Um, there's a lot of information that you can see inside of your WatchGuard cloud logging to really get an idea of what your device is doing. Also under monitor, this is where we can go in if we're using off point. This is where we can see the activity on our off point service. So I can get an idea of how my MFA is operating. If I'm using TDR, I can go in and monitor from here as well. So monitor exactly what it says, look at what's happening. Under configure, this is where you can actually interact with these services, make changes. So under configure, for example, this is where uh, I'm not using cloud log or I'm not using cloud management. I am using logging. I do have some basic functionality here through my logging. For example, if I wanted to do firmware upgrades from here, I can definitely do that. Um, under my off point, this is really the nuts and bolts of getting off point up and working. Um, if you're not using off point, this looks interesting. Please let me know. I'll be happy to do a, a personal demo for anyone that is interested in that service. But this is where I would go in, configure my off point, um, hand out tokens, get the downloads for off point, et cetera. Under threat detection, uh, this is where I'm going to be able to configure my TDR. So, for example, if I want to update the policies that are managing my TDR, this is where those are configured. Uh, this is where I can set up things like my signature overrides, my exclusions. This is where I get my general host sensor settings. So, if I needed to turn something on or off, make any changes, all of that's going to be done under configure threat detection. And then endpoint, that's some of the additional endpoint security they've been implementing. Um, shared configuration, so that's really more designed for MSPs. However, uh, you can use shared configurations if you have multiple sites that you are managing and you want to, to roll those out from a templated perspective. Uh, inventory is just going to give me an idea of what my licensing looks like so I can see what my allocation looks like. Uh, my host sensors for TDR, this one's sort of a boring area, <laughs> and then under administration. So this is where I can go in, I can manage the operators on my account, give people different roles or levels of access. I can see more information about my licensing. Um, if you need to set up delegated access with an organization, this is where you can do that. So for example, if you wanted us to have access into your portal so we could get in and help you configure something, help you monitor something, that is a function done through here. Uh, you do have the option for trials, depending on what you've turned on, what you've activated. Um, usually they are for up to 30 days. Beta features. So when WatchGuard releases new features through the WatchGuard cloud, you can go in here and toggle these betas. So earlier I turned on Wi-Fi in WatchGuard cloud. Not that I have those APs, but you know, just to have it on. Um, I always have this turned on, the Fireware beta releases just so I've got those available here, but you can go in and turn those beta features on. Um, you've got a branding section, so if you want to brand your portal, uh, you've got your dark web scan, that's where it resides here, and then you've got your audit logs. Notifications are where you can set up rules, so if you want to have different alerts going to you, that's where you set those. You didn't need to have your device logging to cloud visibility. And then if you want to create any scheduled reports, you would configure those here as well. So again, if you haven't really spent a lot of time in, in WatchGuard Cloud, um, my recommendation is start with the logging piece. Get your firewall logging. If you have basic security, you get 24 hours of data retention. If you have total security, you get 30 days of data retention. You can always purchase more if you would like it, but you at least get a starting point. Start there. Um, if you have not implemented MFA, I'm going to harp on this about in almost like every single webinar that we do because MFA is absolutely necessary. Uh, there are trials available for off point, so you can get it up, test it, see if you like it before you ever pay anything. Um, TDR is a, a, a great tool if you've got total security to do some additional analysis and get insight into the endpoints of your, of your network, even if they're outside of your network. TDR extends control outside, extends visibility outside, so especially if you've got users that work from home, great tool to have. There's tons and tons and tons of stuff in cloud visibility and there are in WatchGuard Cloud and they're only adding more. So definitely something that you should test out. If you need help setting it up, 
course, we are always here to assist uh, and point you in the right direction. Um, just a side note, not something that I had put in the slideshow, but something that I do want you to be aware of. Um, data loss prevention is a service that WatchGuard has available through Total Security. That service is not available on the new hardware. WatchGuard is actually sundowning that service. Um, if you currently have DLP licensed on your firewall, I believe it's August 2023 that that service is, uh, WatchGuard is going to have that provided through based off of your licensing. But just please be aware that it is not included in total security in the new hardware because they are moving away from that service. Um, also, a slight change in licensing, if you are not aware, the access portal functionality is now available through basic security and total. It used to just be total security suite, but it's such an important tool that they, they dropped it down to being available through basic security. So just a couple of things from a licensing perspective for you all to know. Uh, and upcoming classes. So we do have several happening between now and the end of the year. We've had some really good classes the last few weeks. Um, we always offer our classes in person and virtual, depending on what fits your schedule, what you feel comfortable with. Our next class is here in Charlotte on October 25th through the 28th. We host that here in our office, so you can come see uh, come see us in person. We've got a Phoenix class in November, and then we have another Charlotte class in December. So if you want to get any done before the end of the year, perfect time to get signed up. We also offer offer custom on-site training. So if you've got several people in your organization, it's easier to have us come out to you. We are more than happy to do so and, and assist you in, in getting that watch guard knowledge up to where you feel more comfortable. All right, so as always, we'll open it up. If you have any questions, please feel free to send those over and uh, I'll get those answered for you. Give it a couple of minutes here to see if anyone has anything. All right, not seeing anything come through um, at, at any point in the future. If something pops up, please send me an email. I'll be happy to point you in the right direction. Um, again, if any of that new hardware looks good to you, reach out to your account manager, or if you're not sure who that is, send me an email and I'll point you in the right direction. Thank you all so much for attending our October webinar. We hope that this information was enjoyable. Um, if you ever have suggestions, requests for demos, content, anything like that, send it over. We like to know what you want to have covered, and we will cover that uh, at your request. So send that over to us. We'll be happy to throw that into one of our upcoming webinars. Thank you all so much for your time. Have a great afternoon, and we will see you in November.